that was a long gospel reading. Right, hearing all of those generations from, from Abraham to, uh, to Jesus, uh, the Matthew records there, and, and I hope that those who are, who are watching the homily on, on YouTube will take the time to just kind of read through it because you get a sense of this is, it's been a long time. Right, almost 2,000 years from the time of Abraham to the time of Jesus. Almost 2,000 years from when God had made that promise to when it gets fulfilled in, in the coming of our Lord. And as, and as we read it, and we can imagine what it was like for those Jews just waiting and waiting and waiting generation after generation and wondering what is taking God so long and wondering if maybe God forgot or if maybe God wasn't going to keep his promise. But then we see something really beautiful at the end. Um, Matthew pointed out that from, from Abraham to David was 14 generations, and from David to the Babylonian captivity was 14 generations, from the Babylonian captivity to Jesus was 14 generations. Now you can take, you guys know Roman numerals, right? You've learned how to do Roman numerals? You know what they are, right? So, you know, the Romans, they use letters for numbers, and so if you took my name, David, and you turned out, use the, the, num, the numeric value of each of those letters. So D is 500, A is nothing, V is 5, I is 1, and then D is another 500. And you total that up, and you get 1,006, right? Uh, well, the Hebrews, they did the same thing. In Hebrew, they use letters for numbers, uh, but they have different values. But if you take the name David in Hebrew, and you take all of those letters and you add them up, it comes to 14. Right? And so that when Matthew points out that it's 14 generations from Abraham to David, from David to the Babylonian captivity, and from Babylonian captivity to Jesus, we think, man, God had something in mind here. Right? He, he was planning something. And we know that David was someone else that God made promises to. And so this long time of waiting that just seems like God's not keeping his promise, at the very end, Matthew says, oh, and by the way, this is like three times the promise. God is doing something even greater than what you thought he was going to do. And that time of waiting is really important. This past Sunday, um, our, our second reading this past Sunday was from the letter of James. And James used the analogy of a farmer who plants seeds, and then, then it comes in, it rains, and it starts to grow, but then it, then it stops raining. And they have uh, this long, dry time. And then finally it starts raining again. They have a second rainy season. And, and then the, the plants are, are ready to be harvested. And, and during that dry time, we can imagine if you're, the, if you're the farmer looking out at the crops as the ground is just getting drier and drier and drier each day, and the crops stop growing because they don't have any water, it looks like nothing is happening. But actually, at that time, the, the plant... It's sending roots down deeper and wider, looking for water, looking for water anywhere it can find it. And so it grows these big roots so that when the rain comes, then it's able to just soak up all of that water and grow really quickly and produce great fruit. But that dry time, it's necessary for the plants to grow their roots. And, and this time of waiting from Abraham to Jesus, this long, long time of waiting, it was necessary. For, for people, for their hearts to grow, for their longing to increase, for them to be prepared and to be ready to receive the Lord when he comes. And, you know, likewise for us, um, there's, a, a, there's a saying I love. It says, um, to, to trust God means to trust in his timing. Right? To trust God means to trust in his timing. Right? And, and, and so, like, we know that that God, God knows what's good for us, that he wants to give us what's good for us, and that he'll do it at the right time. And that might not be when, when we would like. You know, oftentimes we're, we're, we're really impatient. and We wish God would just do things right now. But sometimes God, for a very good reason, makes us wait, makes our longing increase, so that way we can love him more, trust him more, and grow in our faith. Today, the church begins this it's kind of countdown till Christmas. You know, normally uh, the readings and the prayers of the Mass are based on what day of the week it is. But as we, as we come close to Christmas, it's, um, they're, they're set by how many, how many days it is until Christmas. And so we've started this, this octave of, of preparing us for Christmas. That'll be 
uh, just next week, and reminding us of this, this kind of longing for Jesus that we are supposed to have, that the Lord wants us to have. So we continue with this celebration of the Mass. We, just, you know, we, we bring to the Lord all of our own petitions, all of the ways in which we want the Lord to come to us today, but especially we just pray that he, would, that he would increase our own longing for him, that he would increase our desire to have him in our lives. Let us stand and present to God.